Hi everybody, this is Zena Marie Yule. I'm the author of the uh, historical romances, Whiter Pastures and All Mouth and No Trousers. These are uh, part of the Icebound series about um, Antarctica about uh, 1900. So I'm going to give you a few uh, interesting facts about Antarctica and about how um, my research led me to uh, create these uh, novellas and um, hopefully you'll enjoy. So the main question first is why? Why did I decide to write about Antarctica? Well, the uh, answer to that is that it really hasn't been done before as, as far as I know, uh, so it's unique. And also, uh, I am fascinated with Antarctica. So I went through a phase as a reader, like many of you um, have, of uh, you know different genres like uh, sci-fi, fantasy, romance, whatever. Well, one of those um, genres or classifications, categories, um, has, has been a real life adventure stories. And um, these are of uh, explorers from days gone by. So one thing I began to notice as I read them was a lot of similarities. So similarities in that, of course, they're going to remote places. There's a lot of danger. There's a lot of suffering, um, starvation, uh, scurvy, um, uh, gruesome accidents and um, conditions. Usually these expeditions were led by a naval officer, oftentimes British, and they have a, like a strict hierarchy and command structure. And the crew really weren't all that valued, and so a lot of them died, not to say that the commanders didn't, but in particular, crew tended to die. Then, I, in my reading, I came to um, this uh, wonderful book called Endurance, um, written by Alfred Lansing, who is a journalist. Uh, it's not a new book, it's, uh, I, I don't know, I guess it was written in the 50s or something. But um, it's said to be one of the greatest uh, adventure stories ever told. And indeed, I would argue that it is. Um, some of the, uh, the really accurate uh, descriptors of this, um, this adventure are, you know, harrowing, thrilling adventure, uh, really inspiring heroism. Uh, stuff like that and it has to do with uh, endurance is uh, the name of this ship and Ernest Shackleton was the commander and we will get right back to to this but first let's kind of uh, pull back a little bit and and look at the um, overall uh, worldwide efforts um, when it came to um, to exploration so uh, this, the age called the Heroic Age, which is usually late 1800s to early 1900s, uh, has had been uh, kind of brewing for a long time. Basically, it was uh, Europeans dashing all over the globe looking for glory with their new explorations. Uh, so they did it for a number of reasons, national pride being one of them, getting new territory, of course, uh, claiming new territory. Uh, they also did it uh, for military advantages, uh, for economic uh, advantages, with shipping and trade, and uh, scientific uh, achievement. So example of one of these um, quests was that of the Northwest Passage, which is shown in this little map here in the red line. Um, the search for the Northwest Passage went on for centuries and was until just recently pretty much a complete failure because ice covered the area for too long. Um, in 1497, John Cabot uh, started out this quest and so 
you can see that it, you know, went between can uh, the you know, Arctic Circle and Greenland and, you know, northern uh, Alaska. Of course, it's very, uh, very remote and very um, frozen, <laughs> which, uh, you know, was a big problem for a long time. So these expeditions, they inevitably ended with, um, you know, death, uh, starvation, you know, poisoning by uh, canned foods. Um, one of the really kind of poignant uh, expeditions that uh, encountered this was that of um, Sir John Franklin uh, of Britain. And when he sailed, you know, with a couple ships up to the Arctic uh, to, you know, do his heroic thing and never came back. This was a terrible blow to uh, British pride and um, uh, and confidence, I believe. So um, just as a sidebar, if you want to um, kind of learn more about this uh, expedition without you know, reading about it, <laughs> you can watch the series The Terror by AMC, the first season. It's fairly um, accurate to, as to what the men went through with, okay, with a monster thrown in, but uh, it's, it's horror in the kind of most visceral sense because it really was real, except for the monster, although, I don't know, may, maybe there was a monster. Uh, I haven't been there. So let's go back to Shackleton. So the last feat of the heroic age is uh, considered to be uh, Ernest Shackleton's adventure on the endurance. So uh, originally Shackleton's uh, adventure was to go and locate the South Pole. Well, that didn't work too good because um, in 1911 uh, there was a, a race between uh, England's uh, Robert Falcon Scott, his expedition, and Norway's um, Amundsen. Ro I think it was Roland Amundsen. Uh, and uh, Norway ended up winning. So when Shackleton, uh, Shackleton kind of switched gears and he decided that Instead of uh, finding the North Pole, uh, he was going. He and his uh, men were going to be the first uh, group that was going to transverse uh, Antarctica on foot. Well, he promptly uh, the ship promptly got uh, mired in the ice. He had to uh, winter over. I think it was two years, two winters, and the movement of the ice eventually crushed the ship and they had no choice but to uh, walk uh, to what they hoped uh, would be safety. So the men pulled these heavy sledges up and down over these uh, horrible um, ice, uh, you know, jagged uh, hills, uh, and over the ice flows and for hundreds of miles. And there was, um, you know, no nothing to eat other than the occasional seal. They were by this time out of their, uh, completely out of their provisions. And the poor sled dogs, well, they all got eaten along the way too. But Shackleton made a vow. He was going to save every single um, man on his crew. This could have been because he was a uh, participant in earlier expeditions of um, Robert Falcon Scott. And perhaps at that time he decided he was going to, uh, you know, when he was in command, he was going to keep his, his men alive. So they eventually made it to an inhospitable coast in Antarctica and um, set up a little camp. But then, oh no, what are they going to do? They had to get on their, a um, few of them got on this little rickety boat and had to sail across the uh, roughest seas in the world pretty much to um, to uh, an island where they could get help. Uh, world War One was going on at the time so they could not get um, immediate help. It was very 
stressful and difficult on Shackleton. He ended up dying of a heart attack eventually, but he made his goal. Every member of the crew did survive. So let's, uh, let's go on here. Uh, so first, for my, my stories, I, just, I had to make a decision about what time period was I going to set them in. Um, so I decided that I was going to set them in an earlier um, expedition from the famous one that uh, Ernest Shackleton took. And so that is um, roughly the same time period as uh, Robert Falcon Scott's um, national expedition. So that took place from 1901 to 1904. So I uh, set my story in 1900. The idea being that the base was established and people would be preparing for Scott's upcoming expedition. They would be setting caches of food and getting things ready. And now in reality, this didn't happen and the uh, British Antarctic base didn't come into existence in, until much later. But for story purposes, I decided to set it then. Okay. So next, um, decision I had to make is the place. Where in Antarctica was this going to take place? Well, as you can see, Antarctica is a really big place because the U.S. is a really big place and it um, you can superimpose it over the top and it doesn't even cover the whole, uh, the whole continent. Uh, just for a couple of fun facts, uh, Antarctica is the world's highest, driest, windiest, coldest, and iciest continent. It, it is about 5.5 million square miles um, in size, and thick ice covers about 98% of the continent. It's divided into East uh, Antarctica, which is um, mainly an ice-covered plateau, and West Antarctica, which is a large ice sheet that covers an archipelago of uh, mountainous islands. So let's take a look at, um, if you look to the, let's see, my left, your, I don't know, is it your left? Maybe your right, whatever it is. You can see the tip of South America there, the um, brown with the little white um, snowy peaks. And then um, look over and you'll see kind of the uh, tip then of the Antarctic islands there. That's the closest uh, place for, uh, you know, to you can cross to get to Antarctica. So what I decided to do was to set my, um, my base uh, or my place for the story on the Antarctic Peninsula zero in a little bit. Uh, what I decided to do was um, decide to set it at a place called Hope Bay, which you, you see uh, toward the, you know, tip of the peninsula is, is a real place. Uh, this story is kind of quirky and irreverent. And so um, one of the plot points is that uh, uh, in, wider pa in wider pastures, the um, male uh, lead arrived at Hope Bay, Antarctica, thinking that he was going to Hope K, Australia. Quite a bit different. So, I got my place. Now, let's zero in a little bit more and look at some of the accommodations that remain to this day. So what, you know, at this time period, what would their houses and their stoves and their, you know, life equipment look like. So these are um, Shackleton's a actual um, standing buildings from 1914. They're still there. They're good uh, visuals for describing what uh, life was like. Okay, so characters are the next, um, next element that I had to make sure to put in here, of course. <laughs> so women did not actually get to Antarctica until um, the 1930s, and they didn't stay in Antarctica until decades later, but it's not for lack of trying. 
uh, this 1929 um, article talks about um, Sir Douglas Mawson, who was seeking uh, members of his of his expedition. And one of my favorite uh, quotes from this little um, this little article is talking about how enthusiastic women are and quote, of course women would be very well fitted for working in the cold. They are well insulated. Later he mentions that girl scientists could live in a hut and perform observations. Unfortunately, no girl scientists <laughs> Uh, made it into his uh, expedition. So here are a couple of other dates of, uh, pertaining to women in Antarctica. In 1931, uh, you see uh, Ingrid Christensen and her companion here uh, relaxing on the deck. Uh, they were the first women to see Antarctica, the first women we know uh, documented to see in, in uh, Antarctica. And um, Caroline, Mickelson in 1934 was the wife of a ship captain. So she actually made it uh, to step foot on Antarctica and long enough to raise a flag and take a picture. Um, Ingrid Christensen, same woman as, as above uh, there in 1937. She returned to uh, Antarctica and she actually set foot on the mainland. Okay, so I'm gonna have a woman at least a couple of women in my story. Uh, you can't really have uh, a romance unless it's a gay romance without some women. So even though uh, women did not uh, appear at the base at that time, I gave um, the women that were there appropriate employment roles like maids, uh, cooks, secretaries, and so forth. So this here uh, shows men from the time we got some sailors and we have an officer. So these photographs help uh, when devising uh, characters and actions and describing them and whatnot. So here also is a, a shot of the uh, men in Robert Falcon Scott's expedition looks like um, he is uh, the one sitting on the ground with a little white thing they look pretty ragged um, didn't have fancy clothes but they made a good um, they made a good try for it unfortunately they all died on the way back it's a tragic story um, that's pretty well documented if you're interested in learning more about it another uh, character were the dogs of course sled dogs they pulled um, they were a method of transportation in the uh, in the Arctic and in the Antarctic however no matter how no matter how cute they are in this picture of the guy with the pipe the little puppies they were not uh, pets in any stretch of the imagination they did have names um, and they were a source of amusement for the men often and entertainment, but they were working animals and They could you know, they were pretty wild um, Closer to their ancestor the wolf than probably our domesticated dogs today Or at least that's how we probably should think of them um, Because they often fought and they even uh, cannibalized each other if nobody was there to break up the fight Let's um, talk a little bit about how all this research came together into a story. Uh, the overall setting made it in. Um, the actions on the base, scientific uh, experiments, you know, some military uh, expedition. The actions of the characters, I already mentioned the occupations of uh, women. Uh, the men's occupations, uh, the two male leads in my stories, uh, one is uh, basically a gardener who has to get, you know, find something else to do. The other is a commandant of the base. Also the plot involved uh, involves love and eventually marriage, which is not as uh, bizarre as it sounds 
because in recent times, in recent um, decades, when women have um, been in greater numbers in Antarctica, um, there have been a number of marriages that took place there because you're, you know, you're stuck in a, a building for months on end. I guess that has its, um, has its inevitable consequences. Uh, let's see, there was an, an international rivalry that made it into the story uh, between Britain and Norway. Uh, there was lots of fleeing into the frozen wastes on dog sleds. Penguins was a plot point. Uh, there was cricket, there were um, newsletters uh, put out to keep the morale up, uh, and so forth. Uh, as um, opposed to the grim and depressing nature of a lot of the true accounts, this is a humorous and lighthearted, uh, obviously. So here are the uh, descriptions of my two uh, stories, Wider, Pass uh, Wider Pastures is uh, about a meek British spinster who serves as a chambermaid on the British Antarctic base. Uh, she also is a spy. And when a handsome young man, Handy McKennigan, shows up uh, on the last ship before summer ends, so this would be probably February, um, she falls for him immediately. He's kind of dumb, you know, thinking that he was going to Australia when it was really Antarctica. Anyhow, the big problem is that uh, her corrupt bosses, spy bosses, demand that she kill him. Oh no, what's she gonna do? Read the story and you'll find out. Uh, in all mouth and no trousers, uh, there's a loud and blustery commandant of the base there. He is foiled at every turn by his beautiful secretary. She uh, knows what she wants and it's him as a husband whether he likes it or not so here we go the reason um i wanted to talk to you a little bit about um antarctica and these stories is that uh, ebook has been out for a while but the audiobooks have just uh, debuted so if um, the audiobooks are available on all kinds of different platforms including audible Chirp is a new one, audiobooks.com. Um, ebooks are right now exclusively at Amazon. But check out my website at xuwriter.com and um, let me, you know, find out more about my books and my writing. And if you have any questions, you know, fill out the contact form and I'll try to get back to you. So thanks for everything. Hope you enjoyed this um, little presentation. And, um, you know, stop by my website, uh, listen to a, a sample of the stories, and enjoy. Thanks. Bye.